Good morning everybody, today is the 20th of October 2021 and today is the fifth seminar presented by uh, Jan Al Jordan Incorporated. It's also the last seminar for the year. Um, remember by watching this video you're entitled to one CBD point, non-verifiable though, um, and please contact Kim Skuman of my office from my office and she will then issue you the said certificate. Our guest speaker is Adrienne de Blanche. She is a lecturer and facilitator from the company Business and Auction Academy and she is CETA, CETA accredited and she's going to, as she puts it in her word, demystify um, estate agents qualifications. Um, it's very informative hope you enjoy it. Uh, sit back, relax and uh, listen to what she has to explain and inform us about. Thank you. Hi there. I'm here to tell you a little bit more about the real estate relevant qualifications and how to obtain them and the different routes and options and to basically demystify the entire uh, real estate qualification scenario a little bit. The first thing that's quite important to know and to understand is the fact that it's not only one single thing. It's a multiple layer, almost like peeling an onion, a multiple layer facet that we need to abide by and adhere to. So let's start um, from the beginning. First of all, you've got a, an internship that you must complete. Your internship automatically starts running when you join the industry or join an agency and then that agency registers you with the governing body, the EAIB. When you register with the EAIB, you obtain a Fidelity Fund Certificate. And this Fidelity Fund Certificate has a date of issue. The date of issue is then the formal start of your year internship. The internship runs over 12 months, and once the internship is completed, you submit then a manual or printed logbook. At the moment, the electronic version on the EAB's portal just doesn't work that well. So at the moment, it's a manual printed logbook that you then submit to the EAB. They assess it and they tick off the box of internship. So that's the only way to then complete your internship. Is this logbook applicable to everyone? The logbook is applicable to everyone that joined the industry after 2 January 2013. So if you're in the industry after that, that means that you must then complete your internship by then submitting a logbook to the EIB. So that's our first step. Then we take a look at the second step. And the second step, remember that step one and two can run uh, simultaneously as well. So where step one was the practical part of the qualification, step number two is the formal part of the qualifications or then the theoretical part thereof. So secondly, we will then take a look at the formal qualifications that you must complete. On an NQF level four, there is a qualification called FETC NQF4 Real Estate ID 59097. We refer to it in practice as NQF level four. And that qualification must be completed by you in terms of regulation 633 if you want to practice as an agent. Now, this is where it starts getting a little bit more confusing. There are different ways for you to complete this actual qualification. So let's take a look at them. First of all, the most commonly used method is by completing a learnership. This is a 12 month program where you complete the qualification uh, in a formal setup and obviously it then takes 12 months to complete and you learn. So this is more particularly focused on and aimed for the rookie agents. So that's the first option. Let me take a look at the second option and the second option is called RPL. So this is the shortened version of the qualification if I can put it like that. RPL is short for recognition of prior learning. So this will be applicable or available for you to complete if you have been in the industry for a while or maybe you left the industry and you've come back um, and let's say your logbook or your internship is completed already and you then do have the necessary skills and experience to complete this version of the qualification. 
Why is this different from learnership? In learnership, you learn. In RPL, you show the training provider what you then actually already know. So we give you recognition for your prior learning and experience. So it's a compressed version um, of the NQF for them. So learnership, then RPL. Then we've got a third option. Let's say you have a formally completed tertiary qualification and you would like to apply for exemption from the NQF level 4 qualifications in real estate. You can then apply formally to the EIB. A good example here, by the way, would be like a BCom degree, for instance, in marketing. Um, you can apply through the EIB for the exemption application then, and you submit a series of documentation and proof of payment to them, and then they will then grant you exemption from either NQF 4 uh, or NQF level 5, or even both then. Remember that this must be a formally completed qualification and it must be on an NQF level 6 or higher for you to qualify for this option. So that's option 3 to get NQF 4. The fourth option, although not a popular op option and also not something commonly used now again, uh, is something called an over 60 exemption application. Now this is applicable if you've been in the industry for a long time and you've reached the physical age of 60 or older, then you can apply for this uh, through the EAB. Basically, it's a portfolio that you complete and then you go for a verbal interview with the EAB. Again, please note that this is not something that's commonly used anymore and it is only in my explanation to um, have a thorough uh, explanation for you. So it's not applicable. You can't wait until you eventually become 60 uh, to then get to this route. So those are the four options then to get NQF level four. So we've taken a look now at your internship or your logbook. We've also taken a look then at the formal qualification. So the next step that's basically left is then your PDE exam. Now the PDE exam is an examination that you must then undergo, also facilitated through the EIAB, where you will then write or type an online exam and once you pass this exam this is an open book exam and you obtain the study material material also through the EAB. Once you've passed this examination then only will your status change to full status agent. So basically that is what it boils down to with my first initial explanation saying that it is a multiple step process. So we also get a lot of questions regarding am I not exempted from any of these three processes or steps? In very rare instances you can apply for exemption. If you are um, an intern after 2 Jan 2013 you must complete a logbook. There's no exceptions to that. And then the NQF4 must be completed in some or other way of the four ways that I listed prior. So there's no exemption from that. So you must do one of those options to get the qualification or exemption. And then PDE, um, the only exemption from PDE would be applicable if in 2008 you've already been registered as an agent for five consecutive years, then we may apply for exemption from PDE4. But again, in most circumstances, it won't be applicable to you. You must also then remember that once you um, become qualified and fully qualified as a full status agent, um, CPD points will be applicable to you that you must complete on a yearly basis. This will be applicable the January after you, in the year you become full status, so the January thereafter. The main reason for this video and the main reason for this hysteria that's going on at the moment is then obviously the practice note that was sent out by the EAB a couple of weeks ago. Now the biggest issue here is that the EAB says that if you've had a Fidelity Fund certificate for more than two years as an intern, you must be fully qualified by the end of June 2022. So there's not a lot of time left to tick all three of those boxes, meaning internship, NQF4, and PDE exam. So should you then be missing one or two or three of these things, 
it's really important that you get started with this as soon as possible otherwise you will run out of time there's no way to finish if you don't get started ASAP if you've got any questions with regards to this video or qualifying criteria or advice that you need you're welcome to give me a shout well thank you Adrien um, that was very informative um, I'm sure everybody has gained a lot of knowledge by listening to you and watching your video um, please people if I may encourage you make use of Adrien's um, services her number again is 072 259 don't hesitate to contact her and she will be able to assist you um, in your attempt to become a qualified uh, real estate agent thank you Adrien thank you for watching this video enjoy the rest of your week and God bless thank you bye bye